for tuning in to our online service here at Jerusalem Temple Church of God in Christ, Lila, Mississippi. Under the leadership of Superintendent Royal Riley Sr. and Missionary Mazel Riley. To like and share our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. To be a blessing to this ministry, you may do so by PayPal, jtkojic at att.net, Givelify, Jerusalem Temple, Church of God in Christ, Leland, Mississippi, Cash App, Cash Tag, Jerusalem Temple. Or you may simply mail to Jerusalem Temple, Church of God in Christ, Post Office Box 329-38756.
all the elders, minutes on today. We were, um, me and Sister Bowden, we was in Memphis. I took her to an appointment. And we, uh, we were left the appointment. We was heading back home. We wanted to look for a certain particular place. It was like three minutes from us, really right there beside us. So the GPS decided to take us another route, and I was following it. And I was kind of skimpy and scared of the traffic. So I proceeded to follow the GPS, and it wanted to put me on the expressway, which I do not drive in Memphis. So we got on around the curve, and I was like, no, Lord, I can't do this. And I turned around, which I shouldn't, turn around into some ongoing traffic coming toward us. And the Lord just, I don't know what happened, but he just kept us. The cars were coming like they was just about to hit us. They was right here. And uh, some kind of way, the Lord made my car tilt over to the right. And the cars missed us. And I want to thank the Lord for keeping, out, keeping us that day. Thank you, Jesus. I like to give testimony of healing. I thank God uh, that he gave me, <laughs> gave me a strength. Because uh, when I was little, God um, hit me from seizures. And I uh, thank God that he um, hit me from that. Because I had different problems when I was little. And uh, when I was little, God, I mean, God, I mean, the doctor told my mama, don't give me a name. And uh, God said, not so. And I thank God for that. <laughs> There's no pain, Jesus can't feel. There is no hurt that he can not heal. All things they were according to his purpose. You're going through. Remember, God is using you for the battle. He is not yours, it's the Lord. There's no sadness, Jesus can feel. And According to the master's holy will, no matter what you're going through, remember God only wants to use you for the battle is not yours, it's the Lord. What? 
what it is. No matter what you're going through. Hold your head up. God, your up. God wants you. For the battle is not yours. It's the Lord. Thank God for all things on today. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. So I do give honor to the Lord on today. Amen. To our pastor and first lady. Amen. I give honor to my very own wife. Amen. And our three children. Amen. God is good. And he is a keeper. Amen. He keeps those that want to be killed. Amen. And I'll go even further and say that he's keeping those that don't want to be killed. Amen. God is such a good God. And certainly we, we thank him for all of his blessings. Amen. A quick word of prayer. Be gracious and heavenly Father. God, we humbly bow before you, O oh God. Mighty God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you, Lord, for all of your many blessings. We thank you, God, for your love and grace. God, we thank you for your tender mercies, oh God. Lord, we just thank you for being who you are, God. For you are our God. Lord, and we love you today. We love you, God, because you first loved us. You died, Lord, when we were in our sins, God, that we made have a right to the tree of life. And for that, we say thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we ask that you would bless us on today, God. Bless us this day, God, in this hour. Lord, send your word, oh God. Send it, Lord, that it may save, that it may set free, that it may heal and deliver, that it may change hearts and minds right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. And God, rebuke you all distractions, God. Bind the devil right now. Cast him out of the minds, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we shall be careful to give your name all the praise. And God, as I ask that you humble me, God. You help me to humble myself before you. So there is only room for your glory. And we shall continue to give your name all the praise, all the honor. All the glory shall be thine. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God for all things. Amen. Thank God for his word. Amen. And with that being said, amen, we're going to go to the word of God. Amen. And we'll be coming from three different books. Amen. The first book is 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 8 through 9. And that's Romans 8 and 18 and James 1 and 12. Amen. Again, that's 2 Corinthians 4 verses 8 through 9. Romans 8 and 18. James 1 and 12. Amen. And the word of the Lord reads, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Romans 8 and 18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory of which shall be revealed in us. Amen. And James 1 and 12 says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Amen. And I want to use for a subject, amen, a cause worth fighting for. Amen. And I want to add a subtitle to that, which simply says, fight on. Hallelujah. A cause worth fighting for. Fight on. 
Amen. When we live for God, there will be, as we know it, trials and tribulations we all would have to face as saints of God. Our faith must be tried. Our integrity has to be tested. And there are some things, amen, that may come our way that will really get our attention. You know, I think about that integrity, you know, that has to be tested. Amen. I thought about Job. Amen. We all know Job suffered tremendously. Amen. He was one who lost everything. Amen. Including his children. Hallelujah. But the one thing, the one unique thing that, that stands out to me dealing with Job is how Job still had that mind to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. In the midst of his trials, in the midst of everything that was going on around him and everything that was happening to him, Job still had that mind to worship God. Hallelujah. So like I said, there will be some things, amen, that may come our way to get our attention, but we need to be careful. We need to be careful because when the enemy sees this, amen, he, he sees where all our focus is, is aimed toward, amen, aimed toward the problem and rather than on Jesus, the devil will try to use that against us. Amen. He will try to continuously have that thing playing back in our minds, trying to weigh us down. And not only that, amen, he'll try to make us forget what the word of God says. The word of God tells us to count it all joy when we fall into diverse temptation. Why do we need to count it all joy? We can count it all joy because greater is he that's within us than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. We can count it all joy because many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered us out of them all. Amen. We can count it all joy because if we hold on, heaven will be our eternal home. Hallelujah. So there is hope. Amen. And not only that, but these trials, they come to make us stronger. Amen. Everything is working out for our good. Hallelujah. So when those trials and tribulations begin to come, amen, amen, and, it, and some things that may come our way that we just can't seem to understand. Some things may come our way we just can't seem to figure out. Amen. But I thank God for his word. Hallelujah. Proverbs 3 and 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. But in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Hallelujah. So we need to continue to trust in God. Continue to lean on him. And believe that God has already worked that thing out. Hallelujah. So it's not based, amen, on our understanding, but it's based in our, it's based on our faith in God. Hallelujah. Amen. And that faith, amen, should help us to have patience in testing times. Patience in testing time. Well, someone may say, you know, waiting on God can seem very difficult at times. Amen. And the more we wait, amen, it seems like the heavier that burden becomes. Hallelujah. Amen. The enemy makes it seem like our situation is only getting worse by the second. Amen. Hallelujah. But I heard someone say that God is our burden bearer. Hallelujah. We don't have to carry that load alone. Hallelujah. We can give it to the Lord. He is a heavy load sharer. Hallelujah. And no matter what we have faced, amen, or what we may be facing in our lives in this present time, know that God is concerned. And not only is he concerned, amen, but he's very well able to pull us through. Hallelujah. First Peter 5 and 7 says, tells us to cast all of our cares upon him, for he cared for us. Hallelujah. The Lord is concerned about what we're facing. He's concerned about the things and the trials that come our way. So don't beat yourself down worrying all the time. Amen. But we can take it to Jesus. Hallelujah. 
You know, there's a song that says, what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Hallelujah. We can take it to the Lord in prayer. And the Lord promised that he would deliver. Hallelujah. So let's stop focus, focusing on the problem. Amen. And let's put our mind on the solution. And Jesus is that solution. Jesus is our way maker. He is our way out and he is our way in. Hallelujah. He is God, our strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Hallelujah. So we got to go through, saints. We got to go through. It doesn't feel good, I know. Amen. But we must go through. Our faith has to be tried, as I said earlier. The Lord wants to know if, he, if we will continue to trust in him and wait on him. That word wait, amen, that seems to kind of kind of bother us a little sometimes as well. You know, I once gave uh, some few scenarios uh, dealing with us waiting. And I believe that most of us would probably agree that no matter what the situation is, most people have a problem with waiting. For example, amen, if we're in our automobiles, amen, and we end up behind someone in a red light, amen, and the light turns green, amen, will we sit there a couple of seconds and allow them to go through the light, or will we immediately start humping that horn at them? And you might be having your mind already, uh-uh, I've been sitting at this light long enough. This light would not catch me. Amen. Will we allow them a few seconds to go or will we hump the horn immediately? Or maybe we're at the grocery store in the checkout line. Amen. This is the thing that I find us doing quite a bit. I'm guilty of it myself. You know, we would rather get out of line, the line that we're in. Amen. And we'll walk to every register <laughs> until we realize that these lines are long as well. So now we decide, well, I'm just going to go back to the line that I was in. So we make it back to the checkout line we were in, and we find out that now this line is longer than it was before I left the first time. Why? All because we did not want to wait. Somebody say, Lord, give me patience. Hallelujah. Give me patience, Lord. Hey, thank you, Lord. And from a spiritual point of view, amen, when it comes to the the people of the Lord waiting and us waiting on him, sometimes we, we try to get in a hurry. Amen. We try to move before God. Hallelujah. But I will have you to know that God's timing is perfect timing. Hallelujah. His timing is perfect timing. So we got to learn how to endure. Amen. Endure while the Lord is on, in the background working. We got to learn how to endure those hard times. Amen. And I know that word endure, it's, it, it's, it's such an easy word to say, but at times it seems so difficult for us to do. You know, I was looking at over in, in Psalms uh, chapter 1 and verse 3, amen, where it was, it was talking about the godly man and being, plant, being like a tree that was planted by the water, amen, and bringing forth his fruit in his season. And I began to look at that thing, you know, dealing with bringing forth fruit and, and, and bringing forth fruit during, during his season. And I began to look at that in a natural sense. You know, naturally, when we look at a tree, you know, we, we see, we may see the fruits all luscious and beautiful on the tree, or the leaves, they fully blossom. Amen. But the thing we must keep in mind is that before that tree had those fruits or those beautiful blossom leaves on it, that, that tree had to endure some fall and some winter months. Amen. The tree had to endure the, the fall months where the leaves, they begin to change colors. Amen. And, and, and the winter months, they come following. Amen. And it gets cold and the leaves begin to fall off the tree. And the tree eventually becomes bare. So, amen, that tree has to endure those fall and winter months. Amen. And looking at, looking at us as saints, amen, there will be some seasons that we have to endure. 
Just like that tree, amen, we have to endure a season while waiting for our season. I'm going to say that again. We have to endure our season while waiting for our season. Hallelujah. So there will be some things, amen, that we will have to go through. Amen. But we have to be willing to endure. We have to be willing, willing, amen, to carry on despite the hardships. We got to be willing to undergo, willing, willing to suffer patiently. Hallelujah. Have that mind to endure sickness, heartache, and pain. Go through it all with patience. Hallelujah. And sometimes, amen, we may even have to encourage ourselves in the Lord. Hallelujah. David had to encourage himself. Amen. When he and his army, amen, we had Ziklag, amen, and the camp in, and the Amalekites had come while David and his men were away. They had come and they spoiled the camp, amen, and they took all the women and the children captive. Amen. We know the story, amen. And when they returned, amen, the, the men and David, they began to weep. So to the Bible said that they couldn't, they didn't even have the strength to weep anymore. Hallelujah. And not only that, but they were so grieved that they even thought within themselves to stone David. But the Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord. Hallelujah. David began to talk to God. He began to ask God the question, Lord, should I pursue? Hallelujah. And God confirmed it. Amen. He said, pursue and when thou fail, recover all. So I'm here to tell you, amen, although we go through, amen, we will have to encourage ourselves in the Lord sometime. Amen. And God will give us that strength. You know, I can even think back dealing with my own personal issues and things that I was going with some years back. Amen. I thank God for deliverance on today. Hallelujah. You know, I was just thinking back on how, you know, the enemy, he would, I would get somewhere by myself. Amen. And, and that's, that's really how he wants you. When you're going through something, he wants to get you by yourself. But I'm telling you, the best place to be is amongst the saints. Hallelujah. We need the prayers of the righteous, amen, to build us up. We need the saints to encourage us, amen, when we're feeling down. So don't get in that lonely spot. Hallelujah. Because that's exactly what the enemy wants you. And I fell victim to that. Amen. I fell victim to that. I would get somewhere, amen, amen, and the devil would begin to start talking. He began to start talking, talking to me, saying, you know, you ought to just give up. You ought to just give up. But I declare on today, hallelujah, I begin to encourage myself in the Lord. Amen. And what, one way I would do this, amen, I would begin to ask the Lord this question. I would say, Lord, how could I leave you when you're the only one who can help me, God? I used to ask the Lord, how can I walk away from you, God? When you're the only one who can deliver me from the mess that I'm in. So, amen, sometimes we have to encourage ourselves in the Lord. God wants us to trust him. Amen. And he will help us in learning how to take him and his word. Hallelujah. So let's hold firm to the promise of God. Amen. The Lord promised never to leave nor forsake us. Hallelujah. So even in the midst of our trials. God is saying that he's right there. Hallelujah. The song say he was there all the time. Hallelujah. God is right there providing grace and strength for us to make it through. Hallelujah. That's why it's so important and it's good to know Jesus. Hallelujah. It's good to know Jesus, especially when we're going through. It's good to know him. Hallelujah. Knowing Jesus gives us that peace and that assurance that God will bring me out. Hallelujah. And not only will he bring us out, but God will bring us into our grave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, there's a saying that, that Job was blessed. He was given double for his trouble. Hallelujah. God will bring us into something greater. Hallelujah. I'm a witness today. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Thank God for his deliverance. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and you know, I've also I've heard the question, amen, being asked from time to time, amen, throughout my, my life, amen, of, of living saved. You know, I've, I've heard the question being asked, they saying, well, if God truly loves me, if he really cares about me so much, then how could he allow us to go through such hardships? 
How could God allow us to go through such hardships? How could he allow us to be faith, faced with persecution? How could he allow us to be faced with sickness, with hurt, with financial struggles? Hallelujah. I tell you why. Suffering teaches us how to totally put our trust and dependence upon God. Hallelujah. It helps us to be a godly character. And it makes us stronger in the areas of our lives where we are weak. Hallelujah. So the trials come that they may make us stronger. And one thing the Lord, I believe the, the Lord let me know was this. He said that, you know, many people of his people, we will simply forget about God if we did not suffer. We will simply forget about him if we did suffer. Because we would get so relaxed and become so comfortable with a trial-free life. And we would lose sight on how much we really need him. Hallelujah. So it's good that we suffer. Amen. It's good. It's, it's working out for our good. It helps us. It humbles us. Hallelujah. And now remember, amen, that amen, although we have to suffer, God said that his grace is sufficient for us. Hallelujah. God's grace is sufficient for us. When we're going through, God's grace can carry us through any situation, any test, amen, any trial we face. God says his grace is sufficient for us. He gives us that grace that we may make it through. Hallelujah. And not only, amen, does he give us grace, amen, but he gives us his word, the word of God. Amen. Paul described this thing as the sword of the spirit. Hallelujah. He gave us something to fight off the devil with y'all. Amen. He gave us his word. And Jesus, Jesus himself, amen, he used this very thing to fight off Satan while being tempted in the wilderness. And if, if, if the devil tempted Jesus, amen, you can rest assured that he's going to tempt us. Hallelujah. You can rest assured that the devil is going to come on every side. Amen. But let this mind be in you. Hallelujah. That was also in Christ Jesus. When the enemy comes from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. Amen. Have that mind to fight the devil out with that word. Hallelujah. You the sword of the spirit. When the devil comes, amen, with a life threatening illness. Amen. Use the word and tell the devil, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. In other words, fight on. Hallelujah. When the bills are due, amen, and the money is low, food is scarce, children have to look, amen, tell that devil I was once young, but now I'm old. And yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. In other words, amen, fight on. But when the devil begins to talk to you and tell you, you know, you can't make it living that saved life. You cannot make it trying to live saved. Why don't you just surrender to me? Amen. Use the word and say to that devil, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In other words, fight on. Hallelujah. Fight on. A cause worth fighting for. Amen. The Bible says that these little light afflictions that we face, amen, they're not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. Amen. So I encourage you, you know, today, amen, continue to hold on to God. Continue to hold on to his unchanging hand because we have a cause worth fighting for. God bless you. After hearing the word of God, if you want to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, I invite you and I encourage you to do so at this time. Just pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And I believe that you rose again. And Jesus, I pray that you will forgive me for my sins. And that you will cleanse me from all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, you are now my brother or my sister in Christ. And we are so happy and excited that you made Jesus Christ your choice. Let us hear from you. If you made the awesome decision to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, we would love to hear from you. Use the information on your screen to contact us and we will be praying for you. 
If you do not have a church home, we would love to have you into our fellowship at Jerusalem Temple. Just email us your name and your number, and a member of our ministerial staff will contact you with further information on how you can do so. If you would like to be a financial blessing to this ministry, keep watching for further information.